Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're going to begin a study of uh, Paul's co-workers um, from the book of Acts and also from Paul's letters. And we just want to do some biographical sketches. Um, there's a lot we can learn just from, from unearthing what's already there in the text from the book of Acts and from Paul's letters about these individuals. And we're going to begin with Barnabas today, who is really a mentor in a, in a lot of ways to the apostle Paul, when he wasn't even Paul yet, but Saul. The first time we meet Barnabas is in the fourth chapter of the book of Acts. So he's, he's an early convert to Christianity. And it says in Acts chapter 4, verses 36 and 37, that Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, who was also called Barnabas by the apostles, which translated means son of encouragement, and who owned a tract of land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So he's here in Jerusalem, but he is originally from Cyprus, and Cyprus will factor into his missionary work, um, not only with Paul, uh, but with John Mark as well. Uh, but he's here in Jerusalem, and the tract of land that he owns evidently is in Jerusalem as well. Uh, <clears throat> it might have taken a year for him to go back to Cyprus, sell the land, bring the money back. Um, he probably owned land there in Palestine, there in the neighborhood of Jerusalem, or maybe even in Jerusalem, uh, which would have been very valuable and would have meant that he's fairly well off. His sister, kinswoman, uh, Mary, that we're going to meet later on uh, in, in, um, in the book of Acts, uh, whose house Peter goes to whenever he is released from prison by the angel. Uh, she owns a home right there in Jerusalem. She's the mother of John Mark that we'll be talking about in a few days. And um, her house is big enough for people to gather in, and she has a servant named Rhoda. And so she is a person of some means, whether or not she's very wealthy, we're not sure. But we have to remember that this is a time in which there really isn't much of a middle class at all. You were either a day laborer or you were a person of means. And Mary seems to be a person of means, as does uh, Barnabas. The name that they gave to Barnabas, um, uh, his name is actually Joseph to add, Yasaf to add, you know, Joseph. Um, but the name they gave him, Bar Nabas, Bar means son of, it's Aramaic. Naba is the word to build up. And so uh, edification is really a better, it's a more precise translation. Someone who, um, who builds others up. That's, that's who he is, and that's who he proves to be. Uh, the apostles will depend on him. Uh, they call him into service in Acts chapter 11. In Acts chapter 11, the first diverse, large, vibrant congregation is planted, apart from the apostles' uh, missionary work, in the city of Antioch. The apostles send Barnabas there to get that work on its feet, which he does. And we read about this in Acts chapter 16, beginning with verse, or excuse me, Acts chapter 11, beginning with verse 19. Acts chapter 11, and I'll begin reading with verse 19. So then those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose in connection with Stephen made their way to Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except Jews alone. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus, now that's where he's from, and from Cyrene, who came to Antioch and began preaching to the Greeks also, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a large number who believed turned to the Lord. And news about them reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas off to Antioch. Then when he had come and witnessed the grace of God, he rejoiced and began to encourage them all with a resolute heart to remain true to the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and considerable numbers were brought to the Lord. And he left for Troas to look for Saul. 
And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And it came about that for an entire year they met with the church and taught considerable numbers. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Uh, there's just so much in this passage about Barnabas uh, as a man. In the first place, he has the confidence of the apostles. They have this diverse work. They, they need somebody to go up there and to put it on the right track and to establish it. Who do they pick? They pick Barnabas. When Barnabas gets there, his first reaction is to be positive, not to be skeptical or suspect. He's positive and he's glad and he's thankful and he encourages them all. This is not a man who's there to threaten folks with the fires of hell, but to encourage them with the love of Jesus Christ. And, and Luke tells us he's a good man. He's a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And, and, and the work is successful. Great numbers of people are being saved. And then he remembers Paul, who's not called Paul yet. He's still called Saul. And we know his story from Acts, and we know it from the book of Galatians, too. And we'll talk about that later. But, but Saul was the great persecutor of the church, the instigator of the death of Stephen. And God had converted him on the Damascus Road. And, and then he had, he had uh, met with the folks at Jerusalem. He'd met Barnabas. He'd met Peter. He'd gone to the Arabian Desert. And then he ends up back in, in his hometown of Tarsus. How long was he there? Uh, probably making tents and, and, and sharing the gospel with the people he came into contact with. We don't know, but the work was huge and there was talent out there that needed to be put to work. And who thought of him? It was Barnabas. And Barnabas went and brought him into the mission field and for a year trained him under his tutelage to be this guy, this guy that could, that could share the gospel, this guy that could strengthen a church. And, and, and they were so successful that people started calling them Christians. Jesus people, Christ people, we're not sure whether that was a derogatory term or not, but everyone knew the name of Christ and that these folks were associated with it. <clears throat> and then there's one other event that happens at the end of chapter 11 we want to talk about in the, for a minute or so. Uh, Agabus, the prophet, comes to Antioch and tells them that there's going to be a terrible famine all over the world. And it did take place during the reign of Claudius. And so the folks, even though the, 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 the um, famine affects the entire world, the folks at Antioch take up collection in a proportion that any of the disciples had means. Each of them determined to send a contribution for the relief of the brethren living in Judea, the poor saints in Judea. And this they did sending it in charge of Barnabas and Saul to the elders. So this is when Barnabas and Saul go back to Jerusalem. Um, uh, and this is, this is a, a work that S Paul is going to be engaged in the rest of his career, supporting the poor saints at Jerusalem who had sacrificed everything to get the church established in the days following uh, Pentecost. So anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's the next thing that happens in his life. So we're going to talk about um, their missionary journey, his and Paul's. He is the, 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 he and Paul go on that first missionary journey together in chapter 13. We'll talk about that next time. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes.